It might not surprise you that most voters in most districts across the country don't really rank Israel policy as like the number one, number two, maybe not even in the top 10 issues that they care about when they go to vote. Um, but that doesn't matter because APAC and other pro Israel lobbying groups are absolutely dominating the Democratic primaries as if it were one of the top concerns for voters. It's not, it's a top concern for them. So very interestingly, um, they're now and we've covered how much they've been funneling money into a lot of Democrats in these primaries. But HuffPost has done an investigation specifically into a race in Maryland, where APAC and other groups have been very invested. So two pro-Israel groups are pouring over $6.4 million into the contest, aiming to defeat former US Representative Donna Edwards and boost the candidacy of Glenn Ivey, a former prosecutor and Capitol Hill aide. While little separates the two candidates ideologically, Edwards' willingness and even gently to gently break with Capitol Hill's longstanding consensus on Israel issues has earned her the ire of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC. Um, now, both candidates were interviewed for this, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, because my stance isn't that radical, and none of our voters care." Um, but Edwards is cashing in. So um, Edwards says, "This is a district where the issues are that are core to the APAC and its affiliated organizations don't ever come up." Uh, he said of the majority black district calling the spending quote shocking. So to have these folks come in and spend this level of money in this congressional district is actually quite offensive. Um, this excuse me, this is Donna Edwards who's not receiving that money, but saying it's kind of insane that we've got all this outside spending. Um, Ivy concurred actually, <laughs> this is who's getting the money. Ivy's Glenn Ivy concurred noting Israel never came up in candidate forums or debates. We haven't really done much with that, he said adding. I'm certainly pro Israel. Um, so why, why are they doing this? Even though nobody including these candidates seem to take very specific um, stances and we'll get into her offense and what she did. But someone from the United Democracy Project, uh, which is again, one of these uh, pro Israel groups said, we're gonna do our best to make sure that no new anti-Israel member of the squad gets elected. There's no question Donna Edwards would actively undermine the US-Israel relationship. Um, okay, so what did Edwards do? This is graphic six. Edwards elicited particular skepticism from APAC for a decision to quote, vote present to vote present on a host of largely symbolic resolutions affirming US support for Israel, including a 2009 resolution endorsing Israel's right to defend itself from attacks from Gaza. But with her support for a two state solution and opposition to the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement against Israel, Edwards is a long standing ally to J Street, a more liberal pro Israel group. So again, she supports this two state solution, right? Instead of sort of maybe the more Radical, supposedly, but like a one state solution, like an actual democracy, not, you know, two states divided by a giant wall. Um, and she's like, yeah, BDS is bad, even though we all know boycott, divestment, sanctions. It's a nonviolent tactic of resistance that was used in South Africa. Now, obviously, Palestinians are calling for it to be used against the is Israel for the occupation of their land. So she's pretty pro Israel as it goes, but not pro Israel enough. So Ivy, Glenn Ivy is cashing in. He's getting all this money. Yeah, so uh, let me be clear. Uh, there's unfortunately a history of anti-Semitic tropes about how Jews control the politicians. It was uh, used in Germany, it's been used throughout Europe. Uh, and now the right wing in America uh, uses it uh, against uh, Jewish Americans, okay? Uh, so that is not the case here. Uh, this is a policy dispute, and by the way, to, to Francesca's point, it's actually a small policy dispute. Um, you know, should it be, you know, this policy that's pro-Israel or this policy that's massively, unquestioningly pro-Israel, right? Uh, and uh, but at the same time, we can't let. And by the way, how do we know that this is not uh, the people that are saying, "Hey, we should do it." Tuesday solution or even a Wednesday solution, but it should be democracy and then it's that it's not anti-Semitic. They're, J Street is Jewish, they're in favor of 
some of the policies and some of the candidates that are being attacked here by, mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm gonna loosely call it the Israeli lobby, okay? So now, one of the candidates they were attacking the most is Andy Levin, who's Jewish. So there's wonderful Jewish Americans that are the best progressives in the country, and they agree with us. So this isn't about religion, this is about far right Israeli lobby saying we've decided unilaterally that progressives are our biggest enemy and we will spend millions of dollars to defeat them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you chose this fight. So for the moment being, they're winning because God, they've got so much money. And and they do, they spend all this money and just like any other lobbyist of any religion and most importantly, no religion because corporations are the biggest, have the biggest lobbies, right? And they're not people. I know Republicans and corporate Democrats, they think that they're people, they're not people, they're corporations, okay? They don't have any religion, they don't have any background. All they have is a financial interest. All of those different lobbies bribe American politicians. That's a fact, they're called campaign contributions and the Supreme Court legalized those bribes, but they're still bribes and every person that is the beneficiary of these bribes from APAC and Democratic Majority for Israel has sworn undying fealty to a foreign government. They say, oh, we will always, always unquestioningly support Israel no matter what. Why? Oh, I don't know. They spent $6 million in my campaign. They got my unilaterally got me elected when I was totally unpopular. Chantel Brown, um, <laughs> let alone everyone else, okay, that was a beneficiary. Well, why don't you just hang a sign around your neck that says I'm owned by APAC. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of Republicans would also have that sign because APAC is given to hundreds of Republicans. So the, the monstrous Republicans, they also, APAC also raises money from them. Democratic majority for Israel also raises money from Republicans and, and gives it to Republicans and gives it to corporate Democrats and tries to defeat progressives. So do not go anywhere near anti-Semitism. That's nuts, that's for dumb people. Okay, people that don't understand science and decency, okay? But I don't care who the government is. If the foreign government is bribing our officials and they'll say, "Oh no, no, we're Americans. We're Americans who love Israel." Well, I don't care. You're bribing politicians on behalf of a foreign government. I'm Turkish. If Turks did that, it would be outrageous. Saudis do do that. It's outrageous, okay? Just because you're from Israel, or you th say that you favor Israel, you don't get a free pass. Yes. I don't care what BS charge, Oh, if you say anything that is opposed to us politically, we will lay label you anti-Semitic. Have at it, Hoss, you're goddamn liars. You have no credibility. And by the way, who else did they attack? The greatest Jewish presidential candidate in American history. A guy who actually had a chance to win and be a Jewish president in America. And what did they do? They attacked them. So it has nothing to do with anti-Semitism, and and that's exactly right, and that's exactly how we know, um, because this isn't this is actually just a small amount of daylight that they're afraid of. So my last thought is, I think the far right Israeli lobby is actually running scared. Um, that's why they we're talking twenty eight million dollars uh, in this election cycle. $28 million are scattered across a lot of candidates. But I think they understand that even American Jews who get a free trip to Israel, who are taught Israel's great, amazing, even American Jews are hip and, and understand the impact of the occupation on Palestinian people, Palestinian human rights. They understand the destabilizing force that Israel is in the Middle East generally. Um, and so take our cues from organizations like If Not Now, if you're concerned about anti-Semitism and the like, because they're leading the charge to say, no, 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 my Jewish identity is not linked to Israel's occupation of Palestinians, Israel's subjugation and killing of citizens and journalists every single day. So yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say one last thing. Look, we've got probably millions of Jewish viewers, literally, yeah. okay? And I'm asking you, don't ever, ever, ever give money to APEC. They will use it for Republicans, they will use it to destroy the things that you care about most. Give it to other wonderful pro-Israel groups like J Street or, or give it to other causes that help everyone involved, okay? But don't help 
right wing groups like APAC and Democratic Majority for Israel, who are all massively corrupt and will use misuse your money to attack you. Don't ever make that mistake. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.